Hello riders and welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell and in today's episode we're going to continue our coverage of the Game Informer 20 page article that focuses on Midnight Suns and all the gameplay elements of it and we're going to talk about specifically the thing that's probably most controversial with a lot of people online because I've been seeing the you know the ratios at least uh, they're very close uh, to the videos of what people are liking and disliking about this game I think a lot of people at first glance when they saw the trailer thought this was going to be your standard Marvel game they didn't understand what it being an XCOM type game meant but even then those of us who were expecting something more XCOM got hit with a surprise as well where they announced that there was going to be a card based battle system and that I think threw a lot of people myself included through a little bit of a loop so we're going to talk a little bit about what that means with the card based stuff how it's kind of set up at least so far what we know and this is all coming from information from Game Informer both their magazine and their video that they posted and I'll have links to both those down below so I'm pulling my information from them so hopefully they are speaking accurately because that's all I can do is just kind of tell you you know what they said in a sense and then comment on it um, but uh, but I do want to talk about this and focus a whole episode on it because this was the thing that I feel like a lot of people aren't really digging but apparently this is a 40 to 60 hour video game and it's an RPG obviously tactical RPG is how it's officially branded and it does have a combat system that is a little unusual for a lot of us uh, you know not for people who probably play some mobile games and stuff but definitely for a lot of us myself included so um so basically what I have here and this is the part of the article I'm going to focus on which is the card based heroics and I have quotes here from their video uh, in front of me and then I have some of the pages from the article uh, along with some images and video that will play throughout this so after resurrecting the hunter the midnight suns learned that Hydra is using experimental gamma science on some of the magical artifacts they ransacked from Doctor Strange's sanctum so basically that's where the game starts what we talked about in our previous video where the you know, sanctum sanctorum is ransacked by Hydra and that's how Doctor Strange and everyone start getting involved and once Lilith is awakened then the hunter is awakened and we gotta get this ball rolling to save the world basically um, so in Firaxis's version of the Marvel Universe uh, Hydra was an offshoot of an old cult of Cthon which is the god that Lilith worships um, so I guess there's gonna be no Mephisto in this or anything like that which is a real shame I would have loved to see something like Mephisto but I guess they want to tie in Hydra which you know there have been versions of Hydra that have gone after Cthulhu type gods before and worship them in some way um, so it, I guess it makes sense to kind of blend those two together plus the dark hole is involved in this and that is directly tied to Cthon so that's kind of where all that setup comes from but as far as the actual combat in this game uh, they say the card system in this actually adds to your strategy so what they say is that you know when you start each round you have three characters so you can bring in the hunter and two other characters so you get to pick so like I said in my previous episode I love magic and I love Ghost Rider so they'll probably be my two main ones that I you know battle with a lot but I'll probably also rotate in blade a lot of times and we'll see maybe Wolverine we'll see who are the other characters that they announce are uh, before I make those decisions so yeah three characters you bring into battle but you get six cards in your deck I guess now they did say that it's possible that if you have let's say blade hunter and wolverine on your team it's possible to get zero cards for blade if they said it's going to be very rare that'll happen because the cards are generated randomly and i think that upset a lot of people too they were like wait a minute so now you don't you're not even in control of the cards you get um, but i guess there still is some ways to upgrade cards that could be possible to get and add new cards to the potential cards you can get and you do all that stuff at the Abbey so once you get into battle then it'll have a deck and it'll randomly throw you six cards from that deck so again you can improve the deck throughout the game but what ends up in your hands in battle is gonna change so they did say there might be a chance because some people ask this that you could get zero cards for blade it's gonna be very rare when it happens but uh, just because you get zero cards from it won't make I think blade completely useless in the battle at least as far as what I've read so far but there are the cards are random like I said um, but the game does try to be fair in some regard like I guess whatever algorithm or whatever it uses to randomly distribute the cards they try to at least give you at least one card for every character um, so you don't have to worry too much about that but also I think for me personally the cards being random I would say the one bonus that it adds is it might add a little bit of tension because you might show up in battle and go okay there's a lot of enemies on this map how who you know like please tell me Ghost Rider is going to get all the cards because he's more powerful than my other two characters or maybe the hunter is more powerful make sure you know please tell me I'm going to get cards that the hunter can use in this battle and then it's like oh no 
all my cards came up and most of them are for Nico and she's the weakest of my trilogy or my trinity of characters you know that are in this battle so then you have to start thinking strategically and start thinking of ways to utilize Nico in a way that you were not going to depend on her originally so I do like that I think it adds some tension but also might get you to use other characters that you might not use or lean on uh, certain characters in battle that you might not have leaned on and I think that could help overall with the gameplay again i don't know for sure until i actually play it myself but you know i'm going off of game informer here who they got to play two and a half hours of this game so i would say they're a much better judge of the game than i am obviously but i can go off of what they said and then comment on that so to me at least it sounds like the cards could be a pain but i also see the benefit of that as well and i think that's what firaxis hopes people see when they play it is some kind of more benefits than than you know than not i guess um but this is not a grid based game so you, as you can see in the gameplay it's not like final fantasy tactics or or anything like that um and even not even with like XCOM or gears tactics too much um you can f move freely around in, in a certain way but you still have a limit of where your character can go um so it's not grid based um you know or anything like that but it is pretty awesome like the way it's just kind of opened up and you can do certain attacks that can take out multiple enemies there's environment stuff so you can you know throw an enemy into an environment uh, an environmental thing like an exploding canister you can throw a guy off the building if you want <laughs> so there's a lot of cool things where you can use environments uh, as you know hazards and stuff to help you fight and basically again pointing out that this is not going to be a button masher um, and that heroes in this can get KO'd so like Captain America for example he can get knocked out in battle but he won't die it's not like a permadeath you can lose a round like if you just you know the cards aren't in your favor or you don't use them properly um, or you don't get enough attacks in or take down enough people when you get something that can attack multiple people and you can't get enough of them in your blast radius and for whatever reason you lose the match because you didn't you didn't have a good strategy or whatever you're it's not game over you can restart the round so there's no like permadeaths nothing that's meant to be frustrating to you um they do want there to be some challenge in the game um but obviously the more you level up the more you earn those friendship points and all that stuff at the abbey the more you do things and unlock the easier time you'll have going through the game for the most part um, and as the challenges rise you'll rise with them but there will be times where you lose but they wanted to make it to where you don't feel like you lost all this work and you have to go back and redo a bunch of stuff you can just restart the round if you want to. So that's pretty cool. I like that they're doing that. So they don't want to punish you with a, a, a strict learning curve is one of the things someone said. Um, so yeah, so this, like I said, it's not really an XCOM clone, although it's kind of built off of that kind of mentality of a, a tactics style game. But it is an RPG, so they call it a tactical RPG. So it's somewhere between an XCOM and like a, you know, a, a Mass Effect kind of thing. I think this battle system, you know, it's going to be a learning thing. I'm sure, uh, you know, it might take some time to get used to. But for me, like I always say, if one thing pops up on something or two small things that I don't like, um, it's not going to stop me from either watching it, like if it's a movie or playing it if it's a video game. So for me, the only thing that I have any questions on or that I'm not 100% on, it is this card-based combat system. But that to me is not enough to stop me from wanting to see what happens with these characters in this universe. That's how intrigued I am with the world that Firaxis and 2K have built here. So for that reason alone, this doesn't scare me. I'm not a big fan of card-based stuff, but it's not going to shy me away. I will get used to it because I want to get through the story, which is why I play any video game. And that now I got a story game that focuses on characters I love, like Blade and Ghost Rider. And I'm, I'm not going to let some card-based system stop me <laughs> from seeing what happens to them and how they bring down Lilith, I'm hoping. So, uh, so yeah, but if you feel differently, obviously let me know down below. Or if you feel the same, whatever it is, as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and links to all the stuff that I referenced today, Game Informer and their YouTube channel, their video that they made, all that stuff is down below if you want to get more information than what I covered here. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.